This talk is to take us through what is OWASP and some of our history and what we're going to be doing in the future. I do hope you find this enjoyable. Um, if there's any other questions, you can always uh, reach out to me on Slack, on Twitter, on anywhere. So let's get going. Our mission is to make application security visible. Now, this was the mission that we came up with in 2001, and pretty much it's been superseded by a lot. We do things that are uh, not mentioned in this mission statement. So we're in the process of drafting a new mission statement that we hope to have by our 20th anniversary. Our mission though is nonetheless is to promote application security. Our ultimate goal is no application security vulnerabilities. If you think about that as being a vision statement and a never reachable goal, that's okay. But we need to make sure that we're actually doing something about application security. In the past, we would have advised people about security, but that pathway, that, that, advise, that advice does not work. Um, people can be told until the cows come home that you need to improve your application security and yet we still have breaches. So what we want to do is actually start making an impact and actually getting people to have the most secure pathway is the default pathway so they don't have to think too hard about application security. The OWAS Foundation itself is a global non-for-profit um, organization. We have two entities, one in the United States and one in the EU. Um, we are a vendor neutral community. That doesn't mean no vendors, it means we absolutely rely upon our commercial um, partners, uh, corporate sponsors, donors and supporters to maintain our mission. But vendor neutral means everyone who participates in OWASP has the same opportunity. It does not mean no vendors and that's a common misconception among some. OWASP itself is the collective wisdom of many, many thousands of people. Um, you will come to see uh, the statistics shortly and we've never been more a healthier organization uh, than we are at the moment. Now, for some of you that might be a surprise, but the reality is we've never had more members, we've never had more um, sponsors, we've never had more corporate members. We are well on our way to actually um, really shaping the future of web application security worldwide. We hold many AppSec days and training events all over the world. These are run by volunteers. We also have some global events. You'll see those coming up um, in future slides. There is local chapter meetings and activities that is free to attend in your local area. If you don't have a chapter within the short, uh, you know, a very small distance from you, you're more than welcome uh, to start a chapter as long as it's more than 80 kilometers or 50 miles in the old money um, away from any other chapter. We're also working upon, uh, the Education Committee is actually working on a tertiary and industry curriculum. We're also looking to actually start to certify uh, certain trainers and whatnot because we've had a number of requests from governments to say, is this a person a good trainer um, from the OWASP point of view? So all of that stuff is coming up. If you wish to get involved, please start um, attending committee meetings. It is really, really important work. We have so many people all over the world. You'll see shortly the statistics of the participants in our community. Well over 80,000 people participate regularly in OWASP events and activities. Um, we have had so many people um, joining up as a member recently. Um, I love it. It's really, really helping our mission move forward, particularly um, in this pandemic era. We obviously have members, chapters, and committees and initiatives, but we also have project leaders and leaders in general. Um, we're recently making a change to allow event leaders to be full-on high-level leaders of OWASP. So they get all of the leader benefits as well as all of the things that go along with that, such as an OWASP email address and whatnot. So we are making some huge reforms here and you'll come to hear about them uh, during our history lesson. Everything we do should be easily accessible. Our mission is to make application security visible to everyone. And that includes making sure that we um, have, uh, we work to serve underserved communities and underrepresented groups. We want to make sure that we um, include people who aren't traditionally included in um, application security. 
Unfortunately, this industry does have a reputation for being uh, a difficult one to work in, and we need to change that culture. And that won't happen if we don't start including people who aren't like ourselves. So it's really important that we all get on board with this. Um, I can't stress enough that we have, have a huge shortage of people um, from all types of uh, locations. And so you're going to see some changes and reforms coming up this year that encourages more local events to prevent folks traveling the world, providing their expertise and then leaving. We need to do more than just travel and speak. We need to be able to grow our community everywhere, whether that's in Africa, whether that's in India, whether that's in South America. It's got to happen everywhere. And the only way we're going to do that is by encouraging local talent development. And it's really important that we do that. And the easiest way we can do it is to have a really low barrier of entry. And that means free. And that's why we do fundraising. That's why we do donations. And that's why we charge memberships and corporate. Um, uh, we encourage donations and similar. That's how we manage to get our message and our mission done is by getting many, many volunteers. OK, um, we have 228 projects. Um, 21 of them are flagship projects, including the most recent one, which is Cyclone DX, which is a uh, software bill of material standard. Um, we have standards, tools, and documents. And in, for many times, like the OS Top 10, that is actually a more or less a, a standard that everyone adopts when it's not supposed to be a standard. But we do actually truly have standards, such as the OWASP Application Security Verification Standard and others, uh, and obviously Cyclone DX. Um, some of the things that we're most famous for are our documents, uh, such as the testing guide, such as um, the cheat sheets and whatnot. So if you are interested in helping and build and maintain these things, please get involved. We also have a lot of tools, such as training tools, like the uh, tools like the OS Juice Shop. It's really quite important we actually keep um, these tools easily available. One of the best tools for testing software is OS Zap. And one of the things that we'd like um, Zap to actually do, I mean, if we want people to do with the Zap is to learn how to automate security testing. It's actually much better at automated security testing than its commercial counterparts, and it's free. So if you're into doing CI/CD, DevOps, DevSecOps, and you need an automated solution to doing secu like detailed security testing, things that you can't do inside your average unit or integration test, OWASP is easily the best tool for the job at any price. And the fact that it's free is amazing. So yeah, uh, do check it out. We have over, let me just move this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, we have over 4,600 financial members, including 400 and something people who've joined this month alone. We have over 600 people out of that lot who are lifetime members, such as myself. Um, I do encourage people to join. It is a way of actually um, determining the future of OWASP. Um, members get to vote in our elections. We're holding elections again uh, starting um, on September 30. So if you want to become a member so you can vote, uh, you need to do so by September 30, but there are a host of other benefits as well, not just the fact that you can vote. Voting is a responsibility to help steer this community. You may wish to go on the board at some point. You need to be a financial member to do so. So some benefits. We actually have two tremendous partners, Secure Flag and We Hack Purple. Secure Flag allows you to test out your coding skills. The best penetration testers are those who know how to code. Every single programming language, every single program has essentially made decisions along its pathway of being built as to how things work. And one of those things is you may not understand if you don't code that this could potentially be a security vulnerability if it's coded in this way but not that way. And so if you understand these sort of trade-offs that are made to get code out the door and it's functional, but it's got security holes, you are a much better tester. And in fact, that leads on to actually doing things such as secure code reviews, which is the high value part of our industry. I would encourage anybody to get onto Secure Flag. Secure Flag, the community edition is actually available um, with many of the enterprise lessons. 
Um, if you're interested, just go to secureflag.oas.com, oh, sorry, oas.org, and you can actually access that benefit. And the WeHack Purple AppSec Fundamentals training course is amazing. This is essentially a 108 part um, course that will take you um, at least a day or two to do. Uh, each of the modules is very short and you can do them whenever you want. So if you want to learn about how to set up an AppSec program, you can do that. Um, you can access that one through the member benefits page on the about menu. Um, I will actually be updating that shortly uh, to make it a little bit more obvious about how you can get access to both of these benefits. And because we're vendor neutral, if you have a similar sort of thing that you would like to offer for free to our members, please contact me and we will get you hooked up. So we have 250 chapters around the world. We have held over 3,400 events, like chapter meetings, CTFs, and similar, um, including some really large virtual events uh, since 2019. We've had over 145,000 people RSVP. Now, obviously, some of these are repeat people because we, we provide awesome stuff for free. Um, but please do check it out. Um, most chapters actually do have Meetup, and you can find out just by going to meetup.com, OWASP, and just search in your local area, you're probably going to find an OWASP chapter near you. As I said before, if you have a uh, no chapter nearby, and say within 80 kilometers of where you live, you can start your own chapter. Obviously, it works best if you have a local community of AppSec and developers. Um, it's very difficult to have chapters that continue um, without having local support. So here's some examples of some meetings being held. Uh, the OS London is the poster child for our community. It often has over 300 people attending. This is a very successful chapter, but most chapters are successful in their own ways, including making sure that we are communicating to our peers, to developers, and to those in the AppSec leadership. Um, we want to make sure that we actually talk to developers all the time. So if you are considering um, talking at a, uh, a, a chapter meeting, we really do want to encourage developer-centric talks. And any activity that gets people involved, such as CTFs, or anything along those lines, we're very, very keen to have. So obviously this is a CTF. We now have the awards and scholarships policy, which allows prizes to be given in a very transparent way. Um, that hasn't always been true, but these days we, we do have some very good governance around uh, CTFs and prizes in general. So we're about to announce our revised corporate membership packages. Um, we previously had more or less one tier, but different prices. What we're doing now is we're dividing up some of the benefits. Um, and so we're actually creating platinum, gold, and silver levels. And there will be a corporate membership drive soon. If you're interested in being a corporate member, please contact Kelly Santa Lucia, um, or just simply look at our website on becoming a corporate supporter. And you can actually uh, get onto the prospect list and you'll learn about the corporate membership drive. It's kicking off next week. We also have available regional and startup pricing. So for corporate memberships, we define regional as being in a particular, um, I think the um, International Monetary Fund has a definition for um, economies that are up and coming. And we basically define folks who live in those countries or have headquarters in those countries can get access to the same benefits of platinum, gold and silver and pay two-fifths the normal price. And similarly for startups, for those startups within the first two years of their existence, you can also get the same sort of deal. So please do talk to us if you are interested. So some of our existing corporate members, these folks are our top tier folks, and please do support them if you've got a chance. They've very, without them, we wouldn't have a program. We need corporate members to fund a lot of the free activities we do. If you're in a position to become a corporate member, please do so. Um, we have gold members as well, GitLab and Checknux there, and we have approximately 50 or 60 others who are also a part of our silver membership. The membership benefits for corporates includes access, early access to our events and sponsorship. They also include um, the potential for partnering with us uh, for member benefits and similar. Please do talk to us if you are interested. 
Okay, let's get on to the meat of the presentation here. It is our 20th anniversary this year, and on September 24, uh, you can actually access a 24-hour event that we're running. Um, and we've got incredible speakers, including Mark Curfee, our founder. So what I would suggest is get good, some good sleep and uh, check out the and register for the actual event. It's going to be tremendous. It, because it's for 24 hours, it covers every single time zone. And if you miss something, we are going to release it to our members first and then to everyone in three to four months after that. So if you want to see some of these sessions and you miss it, uh, I would suggest becoming a member and we'll provide early access to the videos of all of these talks. So OWAS itself was founded in September 24, 2001. For the first few years, it primarily concentrated on standards development and the developer guide. Our first version of anything was the developer guide 1.0, but there was also trying to be a definition, a taxonomy, if you like, of uh, web.xml, uh, sorry, web.xml, um, more or less how attacks are categorized. Uh, like all similar things, it uh, hasn't been maintained over the years, but the developer guide lived on for quite some time and its current descendant is the web testing guide, if you're interested. In February 2003, the very first version of the OS Top 10 was released by Dave Wickers and Jeff Williams of Aspect Security, uh, as it was back then. Um, so many people are surprised to hear that it wasn't the first thing we ever did, but it was actually pretty early on. It was one of our most famous early projects, and it was adopted really quite rapidly throughout the entire world, primarily because it only wants you to do 10 things. Now, there's a lot more than 10 things to do, but pretty much most people who have an AppSec program, it's usually based around the OS Top 10. Now, as one of the current co-leaders of the OS Top 10, um, please don't use it as a standard. It is not a good standard, but my co-leaders and I are actually thinking about people who do adopt it for a first generation or entry level AppSec program and thinking about how we can actually modify the 2021 version to cope with inappropriate use of the OS top 10. Um, as I said, we've got way better documents and standards than the OS top 10, including the application security verification standard, which is 100% testable, unlike the OS top 10. So please do use the ASVS in preference to the OS top 10 once you've actually got your, you know, you've learned how to crawl on an AppSec program. When you want to learn how to walk, the ASVS level one is for you, and when you're ready to run, ASVS level two or three might be the appropriate choice. Now, 2004 was a very, very active year. Not only was the foundation, which I now lead, um, was uh, founded by Jeff Williams and Dave Wickers again. And in fact, uh, I think Mark Curfee and uh, a few others uh, definitely got OWAS off the ground and gained momentum. But without Dave and Jeff in the early days, OWASP in its current form would not exist. They provided office space, they provided free accountancy, they actually provided the first staff members. So realistically, without them, we wouldn't have OWASP. It wouldn't have existed at this point. So we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to Jeff Williams and Dave Wickers, and I would encourage everybody to, if you come across them, uh, to thank them profusely. They're amazing. Um, they did a lot of thankless work on the OWASP Top 10 for a long period of time and they housed OWASP for years and years and years. So when did we do our first conference? AppSec 2004 was held in New York City. It was actually called AppSec 2004 NYC, and that was our first conference. In the following year, we actually had two conferences and we've kept up that cadence for most of the time we've been around. So we've got AppSec EU, uh, which is tend to focus on research topics, and AppSec USA, which is easily the premier global event for application security. Um, obviously, there are some conferences out there that do very, very well. Um, RSA, Black Hat, DEF CON, many, many others. But if you're looking for detailed application security content, you cannot beat an AppSec, um, a global AppSec event such as AppSec EU or AppSec um, USA. I worked on the Developer Guide 2.0 back then and released it at Black Hat in 2005. Uh, it was actually finished just prior to jumping on a plane. And um, yeah, that was a rather exciting time. Um, 
it was one of our premier things. It was used, oh, goodness gracious. It was used very, very widely uh, for a period of time, but then it fell into disrepair. It's one of those things that if volunteers tend to drift away from a project, it then doesn't get maintained. And so its current iteration is still in development. If you wish to help a revised version of the developer guide, please do contact the current developer guide leaders. But the web testing guide is a very, very good substitute for the, so most of the content that's in the developer guide. Continuing on, 2006 to 2019 was tremendous growth. We've held AppSec, EU and US events every year between 2006 and 2019. And every year they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And in fact, our largest ever event was held in Washington DC in 2019. Um, and not to say that AppSec EU was a smaller event. In 2016, the, or 2015 or 2016, the Amsterdam event there had 22 training sessions running simultaneously. And so that was our largest ever training uh, conference, if you like. Um, it is amazing what this community can do when it gets its mind together and comes together as one. In 2008, membership was formalized, which is strange because OWASP is a membership nonprofit. We should have had membership from the very word go in 2004, but it didn't really get formalized in 2008. In 2009, um, the application security verification standard got going, and that's the first version. Um, I've been very happy to be involved with that almost since the very beginning. Um, I became a reviewer and editor of it after the 1.0 release. Again, without Jeff Williams and Mike Baberski's incredible effort, um, you'll hear these names come up again and again and again. And it's because, you know, we, in Jeff's case, we literally stand on the shoulders of giants. I mean, he is 210 centimeters tall, so um, you can't actually miss him. Um, but his efforts throughout years and years and years of work um, it cannot be understated. Anyway, the first cheat sheet was the XSS prevention cheat sheet. This is one of our most popular um, forms of document today. Um, the cheat sheets themselves get by far the most number of views of all of our documents, including the OS top 10. So if you're interested in getting uh, learning a bit more about application security and you wish to improve a cheat sheet or write one, please get involved. The uh, cheat sheet leaders are very, very approachable and nice guys um, and, and lady. Um, in 2009, we have our first elected global board. Um, before then, it was literally Jeff and Dave and a few others. And they were sort of nominated and elected um, by themselves. But in 2009, we have the beginnings of what we have now, which is a fully elected global board that is elected by the members. So again, if you wish to get involved with the global board, uh, try to get involved in committee meetings, come to the global board meetings that open to the public every month. A key milestone event was OSAP 1.0. It was released in 2010. And obviously we've had the OS Top 10 2010, 2013, and 2017. We're currently working on the 2021 version. And we've had so many projects, chapters, and members. It's amazing. Um, I would encourage everyone to get involved. Now, obviously, this last year or so has been very, very difficult for everyone, and OWASP is absolutely no exception. We are absolutely, uh, you know, we are doing better than we thought, but we are certainly not out of the woods. I would love to see us uh, succeed despite everything. So if you can, please come and attend our events. Please come and attend our um, AppSec virtual in November. Come to our training. Um, we actually do have an a, um, event coming up. I'll just show you on the next slide. Um, we actually do have LOSCON. It's likely to be in person, but with Delta being a big problem right now, um, it may or may not be an in-person event. We're, we're planning on hybrid at this very moment. It could be an in-person event. We don't know. We're hoping very, very strongly that AppSec Dublin in June next year will go off. Um, this will be our first in-person event since AppSec Cali in the beginning of 2020. And then in September 2022, there will be AppSec San Francisco, which has been long delayed. Um, San Francisco has always been a tremendous host city for us. We really do encourage you to come to those, um, do some training, um, learn some excellent um, you know, stuff from the you know, leading edge speakers that we invite. 
If you are interested in actually helping out with the speaker selection, um, talk to Kelly Santa Lucia. Um, we want our community to help us pick better papers, new research, new topics, new speakers. Um, not to say that everyone who's not presented, sorry, who's presented before shouldn't come again. What I'm trying to say is, is that we get much better outcomes when we keep on moving this industry forward, letting new people learn some of the skills such as public speaking um, and obviously presenting their research. It's very, very important to us for our mission to keep that process going. So if you are interested in learning about how we judge papers and get them into our events, please approach Kelly. Um, the more the merrier for uh, paper review. Um, we actually have done a lot of reform recently, including awards and scholarships and grants. We can now actually give project leaders the ability to say, I want to develop X, find a sponsor, and then work on the project, deliver X, and then get paid. That wasn't true up until this year. It's long overdue reform, and I'm glad that we've done it. We're obviously doing a new corporate membership. Again, if you're interested, just please contact us. And soon we'll be getting on to doing fundraising, and you'll start to see some uh, requests for donations and things like that. So contribute back to projects, volunteer at your local chapter and become a member. It's roughly around $5 a month. And if you become a lifetime, it pays itself off within 10 years. Um, for those folks in India and other uh, what we call regional pricing areas, it's actually much cheaper than that. Um, it's only $20 a year. Um, and for students, it's only $8 a year. Um, I'd love to be able to get some sponsorship to allow all student memberships to be, um, to be free. Uh, but we can't do that just yet. Um, you can start your own chapter, you can work on committees, you can get involved in projects, you can actually um, start your own project or chapter. Um, I do encourage people to use uh, pull requests and help us improve our, our website and whatever else we're doing. So we have plenty of ways of keeping in touch with us. You can join an OS mailing list, you can follow us on Twitter, you can like us, and you know, the OS Foundation page then leads to a community page. Uh, for those folks in India, um, we have a very active uh, OWASP page um, where you can communicate with other people in your local area. We have OWASP.com, which is a, um, a great way of communicating with me. That's how the staff actually maintains their, uh, their communication together as well. So we're all there. And so, yeah, do come and visit our website, get involved. And I look forward to seeing you at our summer events coming up. Thank you so much and uh, see you soon.